Hey, Omar. Welcome to Vivid ADM Days. Hey, Joe. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me in, the, in today's session. Awesome. Great stuff. Uh, I've asked a few of the speakers this already, but I'm just curious to know, is there any like major takeaway you want people to take from this session that they can implement right away with their existing maybe project or, or, or software that they're dealing with? I want you to think about ALM Octane. Whenever you think about Enterprise Agile or Agile Transformation and DevOps Transformation, whether if you're coming from the QA side, so how to implement continuous testing and how to implement Agile quality management, or whether you're a PMO or coming from the Agile uh, development side, how to scale Agile, how to extend Agile into DevOps and so forth. ALM Octane is perfect for all of those scenarios, especially if you're talking about the end-to-end -end implementing continued delivery and quality. Very cool. Uh, one of my big takeaways that I didn't realize for some reason was that it actually integrates with ALM. So I work for a large company that had ALM and you can actually use Octane as a wrapper on this and all the other things we're doing hacks for because we didn't even look at Octane. So it seems very flexible. Exactly. Yeah. You're totally, you're spot on. This is why I had the last session, uh, the last piece of my session, which really focuses on ALM Quality Center. I bet that if you Google randomly a Fortune 500 company in the world, you'll locate a, a company that uses ALM Quality Center for most of their quality management, if not all uh, activities. So definitely leverage the fact that you're a happy ALM Quality Center customer and start using Octane for the agile angles that I talked about. Awesome stuff. Okay, Omar. Uh, first question, let's get to it. They want to know, could you explain in more detail the BDD life cycle? Yes, excellent. Thank you. Um, so it starts with the user story or the feature. It depends on your implementation. You you want to make sure that when you create the feature and user story, you create a behavior-driven development test that aligns to it. This is, is going to be your acceptance criteria of this feature, as an example. So do that in Octane, making sure that the three amigos, the developer, the business analyst, and the tester knows exactly what should they implement uh, in this area, in this feature. The second is the BDD lifecycle. So you define everything, including the data sets that are relevant to, uh, to this uh, BDD test. You can then download the feature file from Octane into your environment and develop the script, whether using Specflow or Cucumber. You implement the, uh, the uh, test, the BDD test. You run it, of course, through the CI, and it doesn't matter if you're using Jenkins, TeamCity, Bamboo. And automatically, it is being injected into ALM Octane and closes the loop. So you have a user story or a feature, you have the test, and then you have the test run implemented or injected, full visibility, full traceability, and then you can go on to your next PDD test. Very nice. Sounds like a huge time saver. Once again, we used a, a weird tagging system that wasn't as reliable. And then we used a REST API to throw it into ALM. <laughs> Sounds like a better solution. I'm so upset I didn't know about it. So uh, awesome stuff. It, it, this is why. This is exactly why we're bring we are building Octane to to serve those specific needs. We know how QA should work in 2020, uh, three weeks from now, and we are building Octane to serve exactly what the needs of the agile quality management uh, community. Very cool. Okay, Omar, we have another question. This is from Andrew. Andrew wants to know, is LMQC15 now entirely browser-based? Okay, so the, the answer is no. ALM client is built using the .NET technology, which means that it's either running without Internet Explorer or it's a hell of a, a damn good uh, desktop application, okay? You can use it uh, like Outlook or Excel or whatever using the technologies that we offer. One of them, which is 
probably the most uh, used in the last uh, year is called the ALM Client Launcher. The ALM Client Launcher allows you to um, use the ALM Client, all the, the capabilities, uh, with a click of a button, without the need of being an administrator, without the need to use Internet Explorer, and so on. That's one path. The second path is to use the new web client, the web interface that, that we uh, uh, created for ALM Quality Center, which we call the web runner. The, the intention of the web runner is not to replace 100% of the capabilities that you have in the traditional ALM client. And mainly, it's not intended to replace all the workflow capabilities that you put, you as an enterprise, you put into the ALM client. It does intended to be a very simple yet powerful web interface that allows you to grab the tests if that, that you defined to execute them, run, fail, and so forth, and open defects that will then be uh, captured within the, the ALM system. So 20% of the capabilities that 80% of us need in our day-to-day management work. Awesome. So Omar, another question. Uh, this one's from Jonathan, and Jonathan wants to know, could you talk more about MicroFocus Connect for the application lifecycle intelligence ALI adoption? Would be would we be able to talk about the new sync capabilities? Okay, I think that the question is going uh, uh, to multiple directions. Let me <laughs> focus on on MF Connect, and then Jonathan, if if you want to continue with other questions, uh, just, just shoot to, to Joe. Uh, let's talk about MF Connect. So MF Connect is our default synchronization engine in ADM and soon to be in MicroFocus as a whole. So we're starting with adopting it through the ALM ecosystem. If you are an ALM customer, either an ALM quality center or an ALM Octane, you can download MicroFocus Connect and use it for free. Actually, if one of the connectors that you use is a MicroFocus product, then it is at your service for, for free. Second, MicroFocus Connect is, like I said, our default synchronization engine. It allows you, for example, if you're using a third-party agile management tool like Azure DevOps or uh, uh, version one, it allows you to connect your backlog into Octane. Of course, you can manage backlog in Octane if you want it, but if you're already uh, using some kind of an agile management tool, you can sync synchronize those entities into MF Connect, uh, epics, stories, defects, and so forth. And then you can do the same with requirements management, service management, and other types of applications, even Excel. Um, you can bring in assets into ALM in order to have the data and analytics. Maybe one, one last uh, uh, comment, Joe, before sure. we move on. Uh, it's super, super flexible, which means that you can even write your own connector uh, if you have a homegrown application or if you have a connector, a system that we still didn't uh, develop a connector to, you can develop your own connector and start syn synchronizing ALM and ALM Octane into, um, into this uh, new tool that you need. How hard is it to create that connector as an API? It's just... Or... There, there is an SDK. There is an SDK, SDK that okay. is public. Yeah, and you can uh, use the uh, the documentation and, of course, the code in order to create this new connector. Very cool. All right, Omar. We have another question. This one's from James. And James wants to know: Can you touch upon any license or adoption changes going from ALM.NET to ALM Octane? Thank you so much for asking it because I actually, when I finished recording, I said to myself, I should have put this as part of my uh, presentation. Um, so yes, very, very important. Um, up until now and until January 15th, 2020, the MicroFocus ALM Quality Center customers can share 
all of their licenses, you know, one to 100% of their licenses with ALM Octane. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was our intention in order to make sure that everyone in our install base is aware of um, Octane, okay? Now that ALM Octane has matured, and we have hundreds of customers that are using it uh, worldwide, including some of the largest companies in the world. And now that we understand that ALM Octane is going to a different path uh, uh, that, than, than ALM Quality Center, we talked about quality management versus DevOps management, uh, we are stopping uh, or limiting the entitlements that our Quality Center guys have to 15%. So if you are listening to me and you are a quality center customer with 100 concurrent users, you can use until uh, up to 15 licenses uh, in, in what we now call Octane Quick Start. Uh, we are... Um, we will happy. We will be happy to to have you as a quality center customer for uh, for any time you'd like. You know, ALM has a bright, bright feature and tons of new capabilities. Or if you want to buy Octane, you'll need to talk to your sales representative and buy all the other capabilities that I was talking about. So January fifteenth, limiting to fifteen percent of your QC licenses. Very good. So, Omar, uh, another question I want to know. Are there thoughts you could share about promoting quality at the core in our organizations? I always wonder, is there something built into Octane that helps promote best practices to help shepherd people through the uh, quality lifecycle? Yes, there is. But I, I first want to make sure that, that people that are hearing uh, will go to their managers and and convey the following messages. We have seen that in many cases, the agile transformation indeed increases the velocity of of enterprises, but in many cases it was on the expense of quality. Mm. We are seeing enterprises accelerate, but provide um, a worse quality or a decreased quality products and services to our, their customers. And it takes them time, sometimes months, sometimes years, in order to understand the mistake that they've done. And then they are going back to having a much more well-defined quality management process like they used to have in the more waterfall type of, of uh, processes that they have. So our responsibility in the quality um, uh, domain, quality management domain, is to go to our managers today and we say, we say that agile and DevOps transformation doesn't have to be on the expense of quality. Let's deliver faster without compromising on the quality of our products and services. It's, it's very important. I also can refer you to the Worthy report that we issued together, Microfocus is issuing together with Capgemini to see some of the survey results that we have um, um, with, with many of the QA leads in uh, companies uh, throughout the world. Uh, specifically to uh, Octane, yes, there are many capabilities that guide you to have um, a, a quality first a guideline or process. One, one of them, for example, is the application module uh, approach. We have customers that uh, bought ALM Octane just to have a huge a a application quality status dashboard in their corridors. You have, imagine you have um, a list of application modules the size of each box of application module is the level of investment in the current uh, release. And then there is the red and green that uh, shows you, the, whether, you are, whether you meet the release criteria or not. This is a very simple yet powerful tool that allows us, the quality managers, uh, to bring back the insight as ability to the senior leadership and get uh, quality back at the core. And this is just one example of how to embed the uh, quality within um, with ALM Octane. 
Great. Okay, Omar, uh, another question. They want to know, what percentage of test automation should I aspire to? Is manual testing part of t continuous quality? If so, how? Well, another a great question. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, it, there is no uh, silver bullet here. Okay. Yeah. It really depends on um, the structure and the goals that you set to yourself uh, as part of your program or, or uh, product. Um, I can say that, that you shouldn't aspire for 100% uh, uh, test automation coverage. Um, if you can get to 60%, it's going to be awesome, okay? Uh, but definitely the right thing to ask is where should I invest? Which part of my application should be using test automation versus where should I continue to do manual testing? And for that, you can use ALM Octane because ALM Octane, with all the test injection capability coming from the CI plus manual testing together, gives you a great picture that explains where do you get the, the ROI. Um, which parts of the application are covered in a good way uh, with test automation. And again, it doesn't matter if it's unit test or uh, open source like Selenium or using the artificial intelligence coming from UFT now. Um, you can see really what is the coverage and what is the uh, ROI that you get from the automation. You also see the overall quality of the application broken down application modules, and then you can decide in the next program increment, next release, next sprint, where to focus your automation uh, effort and when to, uh, where to continue in a, in a manual effort. So that's, that's where I, I would focus my, my uh, effort in.